Hello my friends, welcome back to another Oxygen Not Included tutorial. This video is going to be about keeping your dupes alive in the most fundamental way, and that is giving them oxygen to breathe. Uh, there's going to be a lot of different ways you can produce it, and a lot of inefficient or efficient ways you can do so, so we'll talk about a whole bunch of different ways you can. Um, yeah, without any further ado, let's just go ahead and jump straight into the builds, and I'll see you there. Okie dokie, here we are. Let's take a look at a few different ways to produce oxygen. And uh, yeah, I don't have much more to say than that. So, first thing you need to pay attention to is obviously this is oxygen. And one of the most fundamental things of this game is not making too many dupes. So I just kind of want to illustrate what the difference is in the consumption rate between having these different types of dupes. So I'm going to produce a whole bunch of them over here and just one here. You can already see how fast the oxygen is depleting in this little room. So one of the biggest keys is to make sure that you don't overproduce dupes and making sure that you always have enough oxygen to keep these dupes sustained. They're already starting to hold their breath. They will be dead within the cycle. So just kind of demonstrates if you have too many dupes and you don't have a good way to produce oxygen, then yeah, you're, you're kind of dead. If you are having problems with that, um, this is not the most fun thing to do, but you can always kill your dupes on purpose and just lower your population. Uh, it, it'll be rough, but it might be a little bit better than uh, having to restart your whole colony. So let me go ahead and spare these people the painful deaths and just delete them with my tool. So let's jump over to another fundamental thing, and that is that your base is going to be consistently packed with different gases. And you need to make sure that you're actually dealing with the lower level gases. And by that, I mean the ones that they can't really breathe or do anything with. And they also sink to the bottom of the map. So these are not placed in here by any order or whatever. I could change the order and whatever. They will always settle to something like this, where all the gases you effectively don't want will settle at the bottom, with the exception of hydrogen. That will settle at the top. So you do need some kind of system to vent the gases out that you don't want. And I will usually just vent them out to space and do that before any other method, because getting into space is usually not that big of a battle on most maps. So I do talk about this a little bit in my uh, automation video, which where we kind of go through the reasoning behind this setup. But basically you want something, some kind of automation setup that's going to turn a pump on and get rid of the gases that you don't want, and then turn back off when you uh, don't have a need for it anymore. So looks like I need to actually turn this on. Let's go ahead and do that. And we're already satisfied. This is already saying like we're comfortable with where we are, but if we have a whole bunch more gases that we don't want, say like this carbon dioxide, I'll just go ahead and drop it in here. Your machine should be like, okay, now I know we need to start getting rid of stuff and just leave the oxygen left over. I don't want any of this other junk getting in my way. So you do want to worry about ventilation. You do have to deal with that at some point. Otherwise your whole base is just going to get overrun by all of this leftover and nonsense gas that you don't want. Let's talk about actually producing it. Um, to start off the game, this is actually what I'm doing to keep my one little dupe alive in the corner on this map. That is Oxalite. Um, Oxalite spawns naturally on pretty much every starting map, and that can sustain you for a little while. So this is going to be the first thing you're going to see when you start the game. And especially when you're first starting up, you want to pay attention to how much you have left. So if you happen to mine it, it'll just look like little uh, clumps on the ground. And it'll still give off gas, and it will only give off gas if there's a low enough air pressure. So oxalite's going to be the first thing that you're going to start using for oxygen, but that's very temporary. I'd say if you don't have your own oxygen solution by like cycle 5 or 10, then you might be in some trouble. So what this one of the first things you need to solve for. One of the first things you will use to solve it is something like this. Uh, this is an oxygen diffuser, just takes algae. I just have an auto sweeper in here just so it'll load it for us. It's not critical to the build or anything. But yeah, this one's pretty simple as well. You basically give it some power, give it some algae, and it just uh, makes oxygen for you. So let me turn on my things here, mine this out, fill it up with, uh, with algae, and now it's producing oxygen. You also want to make sure to how much, make sure to pay attention to how much oxygen is being produced from different things. So 500 grams a second is how much this is producing. And if you just look at a typical dupe, it'll say how much they're consuming. So if I were to click on Gene here, Gene is consuming it at 100 grams per second. So this effectively means that one of these machines can sustain five dupes. And you always want to have that kind of stuff in mind of knowing, like, um, how can I make sure I'm keeping up on my oxygen and what kind of machines are necessary for the number of dupes that I have. You can also check your reports here. 
your reports will tell you if you are at a surplus or at a deficit of oxygen. So you can just check it out uh, here as well, and you can scan through the days to see what's been done. So, yeah, you want to keep an eye on that. But yeah, that's the most basic solution. We'll talk about another very elementary solution, and that is these oxyferns. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a couple dupes in here. And uh, for this dupe, we're going to tell him to plant some oxyferns. And once these oxyferns get planted, they're going to need to sit in carbon dioxide to actually function. So if you look at this, this is going to need some fertilization as well. So we need to actually spawn some dirt. Let's go ahead and do that really quickly, since I forgot that part. Dirt. Dig it out. And there we go. This guy's going to go ahead and drop it in there. You'll also want to look at how much these are producing. If they are planted, they emit a pathetically low amount, 31.3 grams. That means that three of these is just barely not enough to actually sustain one dupe. So these are not good. Um, they also use your water up. They require a lot of maintenance. Uh, these are really not a great solution. Only good to use if you're really desperate. Another way you can use them though, I'm going to get rid of you. Another way you can use them is you can have them planted naturally by uh, pips. So let's go ahead and spawn some of those and I'll show you what these pips do. Here we go. What these pips will do is they'll have a few different behaviors and of course he's just going to walk away and troll me. But if they see a seed on the ground, they should be inclined to take that seed and plant it somewhere. So you can actually use these pips to plant these oxy ferns naturally. That means that they won't take any water, they won't take any dirt, they'll just kind of sit there and do their job. So I'll spawn a dupe here as well, and assuming that this pip ever actually plants something, this dupe should be able to live for a little while. But the the rates for this are really bad. Um, this pip is really messing with us pretty, pretty badly. But the rates in which it emits oxygen is like one-third the amount that, or sorry, one-fourth the amount that goes through. You can see 25% throughput. So divide this by four. That is a pathetically low amount. Um, so these oxy ferns are really not that special. This dupe has a trait that makes him suck down more oxygen, by the way. So yeah, oxy ferns, not that great. Can be used in the early game and if there are desperate measures. I'm just gonna keep this pip in here and we'll check back and see if it's actually wanting to ever do anything. This pip is messing with us. They should be interested in these seeds and they should be interested in planting them. So if we don't see it in this video, I promise I promise it's a thing. Uh, we're just getting trolled by, uh, by pips. Let's talk about the next level. Uh, this is the oxalizer, er, oxalizer, uh, electrolyzer. I'm just making up words. This is an electrolyzer. This basically takes in water and it puts out hydrogen and it puts out oxygen. So uh, this is a very elementary setup and I have something like this in my walkthrough videos. Probably something that I really shouldn't have shown like an inefficient version of it because this is an inefficient version of it. Um, I thought it would be a little bit easier to understand for newer players, but I kind of regret that. I wish I would have gone with a better setup, which I'll show after this. But the basics are, once we turn this on, this will start producing oxygen, it'll start producing hydrogen, and these pumps here will suck it up. It will go through these gas filters, which are filtering for hydrogen, and then uh, the excess hydrogen is going to be sent into a generator like this. You can generate a little bit of power. And the rest is going to be going through this cold pool of water. Um, I do have a tutorial on cooling if you want to know how to make this cool water. But that's what we're going to use to make sure to cool this down. Otherwise, this is going to start producing very hot oxygen. And if you're blowing that into your base, you start risking overheating stuff to the point that, like, critters will die or plants won't grow or your dupes might get hurt if it does get hot enough. Or machines will break, stuff like that. So you definitely do want to cool this down. Like I did mention, this is a very inefficient setup, so let's talk about a much more efficient setup. This is probably the most efficient setup for something like this, and that's something that looks like this. Um, I've, I've seen this build around several times, and there's a reason for it. This is basically the best you're going to get. Uh, this build, in, in a nutshell, separates the hydrogen and the oxygen based upon where they naturally settle. So if we go back to our other example where we were uh, sucking gases out of here. If I were to spawn some hydrogen, the hydrogen's always going to drift to the top like I mentioned. So let's go ahead and spawn some. And the hydrogen will always sit at the top. It will always collect up there and we can kind of abuse this mechanic to our advantage to get the filtering for free. So what I have set up here is this pump should only be expected to grab hydrogen. It may grab a little bit of oxygen early on, but that's okay. And then the two down here are going to be grabbing uh, oxygen. I think I said hydrogen for this, but that's what I meant. This one's going to grab hydrogen, 
These two are going to grab oxygen. They're also connected to these Atmos sensors, which is going to make sure that they're not on all the time, which is another weakness of this type of build. The, the general idea with any sort of ventilation or with pumps is that you don't want to waste energy pumping tiny little packets like this. You want to pump as full of packets as possible. So that's why I have these Atmo sensors. So these will only turn on when it's worthwhile for them to turn on. Otherwise, you're just kind of wasting energy. So let's take a look at this setup. So this is going to produce hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen and oxygen will uh, eventually settle in the places that they're supposed to go. But the first couple times that it sucks up anything, it's probably going to suck up some oxygen by accident. And that's going to be okay. It won't do that forever. Eventually what's going to happen is this is going to get so overpressurized to the point that only hydrogen can exist in these tiles. And then it'll trip these sensors at a certain value. You can kind of fine tune it to whatever you think is best, but this is about where I have found it to be pretty effective in terms of keeping the electrolyzer running as frequently as possible and also not wasting power. And eventually you should get some to something like this, where this pump is hardly ever on, these pumps are on a good amount of the time. And by doing this, uh, you are now separating the gases without having to do any filtration or pay for any power. And notice how the packets are, for the most part, pretty large. So you're getting a pretty good uh, trade-off for how much power you're spending to actually pump it out, how much you're spending to produce it. This is to the point that um, if I were to disconnect this battery, I'm just going to do it for the sake of it, whatever. If you were to disconnect this battery, oh, never mind, it's on a different power cable. But if you were to disconnect uh, this power generator and hook it up to the battery, this actually produces more power than it consumes. So kind of a neat little build. It's not necessary to play that way. You can route your hydrogen, whatever you want, uh, in whatever way you want, that is. You don't have to set it up exactly like this. But this particular block, like right here, this block, I, I think there's no reason to do it any other way than this. And I'm not saying this because I came up with this or anything like that. It's just objectively a lot better than any other setup out there. Um, there may be some like super minor improvements that you could make to it. But yeah, this is this is pretty much it. This is where it's at. So that's definitely what I would recommend as far as an electrolyzer setup. Let's take a look at a couple of other methods here that are kind of non-intuitive. Uh, so what we have here is an algae terrarium. You definitely don't want to spam these out for a number of reasons. Um, these are also not super efficient. This was yet another thing that I kind of didn't wish I talked about in my walkthrough video because they're not really all that important. But the whole idea is that it takes algae and it takes water. So let me go ahead and dig some of this out. When I dig this out, we're going to load up the algae, but it also takes water, which means it's also going to put out polluted water. One trick you can do with these things if you're insistent on using them or if you really want to sip on your algae is you can spawn, or you can not spawn, you don't want to do that. If you can put just a small amount of water wherever one of these are, like on the ground, it will eventually fill the terrarium to the point that it will start producing on its own, and it will just use up the water. When the water is done being used, this will put out polluted water. And the polluted water will slowly gas off into polluted oxygen, hence these uh, deodorizers here. We'll see a little bit more of that here coming up, but this is the basic idea with one of these. This, these are also kind of good in the earlier portions of the game because they will clean up carbon dioxide. Um, so let's just go ahead and spawn a little bit of that so you can see that in action. There we go. Let's go ahead and paint that in there just a bit. You can see it sucks it in kind of slowly. It's not very fast at all. I think one dupe uh, puts it out at about like two or three grams per second, something like that. We could probably take a look at them and get the real number. Gene's very happy. Whoa. Uh, yeah, two grams per second of carbon dioxide is what they put out. So these are not great overall. The best part about them is that they will take any temperature of water and they will cool it down to a much lower temperature just by using it. So if you have some hot water lying around, you can use that um, just to get some free cooling. But otherwise, they're not that great. So I don't think there's a, those are all that special. Let's just go ahead and deconstruct this so we're not getting any annoying stuff about it. Now this is going to be a much better solution. Um, on a lot of maps, there are pockets of water around the map that are polluted water. And very critically, these are polluted waters uh, pockets with no germs in them. So this is going to be very useful for producing oxygen basically for free. And the way that you do that is you can fill up one of these liquid reservoirs. Then when it gets uh, full, you can destroy it. It'll spawn a bottle of polluted water and you can see it emitting polluted oxygen at 200 grams per second. Now this is the cheapest way to get oxygen by far. The only thing you're going to have to do 
is fill up these deodorizers, which I don't have sand right now because I'm uh, being a scrub. Let's go ahead and drop a duplicate in here so that they can load them up. So these deodorizers will eventually turn this all into regular oxygen. You definitely don't, you don't want to have polluted oxygen sitting around your base, even though your dupes can't breathe it, only because it's a breeding ground for germs. But this is it. This is the simplest way to get oxygen from any form whatsoever. All we had to do was fill up a tank with polluted water that already exists on the map. So, yeah, pretty easy solution there, and definitely something that you can use on some of the more difficult maps, or if you're in a pinch for oxygen, or if you can't afford the power or whatever else because of that. This will also convert it at a one-to-one -one rate, whereas it will convert uh, water into oxygen at almost like a nine-to-one rate. So this is still more efficient. The only downside is you do have to use sand. So let's talk about one last thing, and that is when you find pieces of slime or polluted dirt from various different sources. It's going to be kind of the same idea as this, in the sense that they're just going to gas off into polluted oxygen. And you can take advantage of that, even though these are usually considered waste products or something that you don't want to mess around with. Usually, you can set it up in a way that you can uh, build some uh, deodorizers around them and you could build enough so that you won't actually have any uh, germs getting out there from the slime or from the polluted dirt. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's have uh, this get dug out really quickly and let's spawn a dupe so that they will... See these things will gas off normally as we can see here but if you focus them all into one area with the storage bin go, have to ha go ahead and have this requesting organic. I need to drop a dupe in here first. Let's have this requesting polluted dirt and slime they will just go ahead and fill that up, and then you have your polluted oxygen being generated in a small area, and these deodorizers will clean it up and make it breathable without getting a bunch of germs in the air. So that's definitely another option. Let me spawn some sand for our deodorizers. Go ahead and dig this out, and there we go. So now we've got another source here, and you're gonna find a lot of polluted dirt from a whole bunch of different sources. It can be from cleaning water, it can be from using outhouses and stuff like that. And slime, if you have seen the giant biomes that are filled with them, you know that that is very plentiful. So you can just localize it all to one area, and you can see the oxygen is kind of filling out in here. It's not super fast, uh, but it is at least a useful byproduct of something else that is just basically considered waste. So there's a lot of different methods to produce oxygen, and this is just kind of the first round of them. By the way, here's this pip finally planting these oxyferns. You can see the pathetic uh, oxygen production rate from these things. So they're not great. They can only sustain, you know, one dupe if you have like 10 of them or more. Actually, that's more like 12. I should probably do math, but there you go. Um, so yeah, uh, lots of different basic ways to produce oxygen. And these are all the ways I would say are pretty practical. Um, in the next section, we're going to take a look at uh, some examples that I would call, they're, they're not necessarily impractical they're just really uncommon so I figured I would just break them up into a separate section because if you can survive on just these solutions I would recommend that rather than trying to do something else it's a little silly or a little cumbersome but either way let's take a look at those okay I've literally named this section the miscellaneous builds and that's because they are quite miscellaneous these are not very practical ways to generate oxygen but they do work if you have to you have to do it so yeah let's let's check them out so it is nighttime so that's why you got this uh, bad lighting and music but first thing we're gonna look at are rust deoxidizer builds um, these are not very practical only because rust is not re renewable and it requires both rust and salt so salt is kind of plentiful but rust is not really um, I've made one of these before mostly just because I wanted to see what it was all about but Rust is not renewable, there's plenty of other great options, but even still, I don't know, let's check it out. So let's go ahead and dig this out. And we're gonna be shipping uh, rust and salt down into this chamber. This chamber is gonna be filled by, or rather this rusty oxidizer is gonna be filled with salt and rust by this auto sweeper. And this is also gonna produce uh, iron ore. So this can actually have a helpful byproduct of if you need more iron ore, um, you can create it from rust. So yeah. Pretty minor, but also it's it's there, I guess. So one thing I also have, and I've talked about this a lot in my cooling videos, I have a pool of cold water up here, and that's going to be sitting in pipes down below so that we cool the oxygen that gets created. 
This doesn't create it as hot as the electrolyzers generally, but it still does need to be cooled a little bit. And this particular version is just going to be one where we create it and it just kind of kind of blurs into our base. It doesn't do anything special. Uh, this is meant to be the lowest power setup possible for one of these while still having the auto sweepers and stuff like that. So let me go ahead and set this for rust and for salt and we will go ahead and get this started. There we go. Now that it's already sending rust, I'm just going to send it salt. Once it gets down here, um, this should start filling it, and once it gets filled, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on, by the way. Once it gets filled, it'll start producing oxygen, and it'll start producing a little bit of chlorine. So that is a little bit of an annoying byproduct of it. Uh, chlorine will just naturally settle to the bottom anyway, and it's not a huge amount, but it does uh, do the job, I guess. It does put out a little bit of oxygen, so... Yeah, that's kind of what this build is all about. Again, super low power version of it, nothing super special. Here's some iron ore coming out, so you could just set this to be like, oh, iron ore, eh? Ship this back out. And it'll ship it back out to wherever you want it to go, so we're effectively converting rust and salt into iron. Uh, not, the, not the most useful thing ever, and that's why it's in the miscellaneous section, so there you go. Let's take a look at one more rust build, and that is one that's kind of similar to the oxygen build we saw. And this is going to be purposefully trying to separate the two of them, even though it's not really that useful. But just for just for lulz, let's take a look at that. So give me some rust. Good. Give me some salt. How about more rust? Okay, whatever. <laughs> and now that we are down in this area, I think we need to make sure we turn this on. Whoops, wrong button. Once we turn this on, this will start getting loaded. This will start producing oxygen and chlorine. Once we get to enough of it, we'll start shipping it out and we'll have the cooling be passing through. Again, another pool of cold water, but we'll be routing, we'll be routing pipes through it rather than the other way around where we're having the pipes sitting in the air that are full of water. So yeah, not the greatest. Um, again, this will produce a little bit of iron, so we can go ahead and ship that back out if you really want to, but those are the two builds that I would say are probably pretty reasonable for rust builds, but uh, yeah, it's here for a reason. It's not that great. Let's take a look at another thing that this might uh, look pretty familiar. If those of you have seen my Hot Pot video, which is basically a playthrough on the Oasis asteroid, we had no means of producing oxygen for a while other than from a very, very strange way, and that is via morbs. So let's go ahead and spawn some of these. Whoops. So if you spawn these, these are uh, critters that will just produce polluted oxygen every once in a while. And uh, they're going to produce it very slowly, meaning that you need a lot of them. The way that you can get these is from uh, basically filling up an outhouse and then not cleaning it. Uh, if you just leave it dirty, these will eventually spawn. And I don't know if this is still true or not, but there was a point in which uh, these would actually spawn from dead bodies. Which is <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, in a very, like, morbid sense, but yeah, there, there is an option to do that. And for those of you that did watch that series of videos, this will look kind of familiar of producing oxygen from nothing but morbs, and they do a decent job if you get enough of them, but uh, it's really slim pickings. This is not something that I would consider very practical, both because these morbs are going to take up a lot of your processing power, and also because uh, there are a lot of maintenance, they don't produce a lot, uh, yeah, just not not super great in general. Let's get rid of all these things. There we go. Now we have some peace and quiet. So yeah, let's jump over to uh, some vents. So the two types of vents that could potentially produce oxygen for you. Let me start deleting some of this, by the way. Uh, like this. That's too wide. Still too wide. So what you can do uh, is you can get some of these infectious polluted oxygen vents. And if you set up a setup like this, polluted oxygen is going to come out at about 140. If you clean it and then cool it with this uh, polluted water once again that's sitting in these pipes, this will do a double job of converting it to regular oxygen and also cooling it to the point that any of the germs down here die. So you can see the germs come out of here pretty high. Once you cool it enough, though, the oxygen... Um, will be to the point that it'll kill the germs uh, if it's at that kind of temperature. So you can see the current temperature on here is about 38 degrees Fahrenheit and 100% dead per cycle. So that by the time it drifts up to this higher areas, it's pretty much germ free. This is a pretty cheap and effective way to get oxygen. If you happen to have access to one of these vents, 
Um, it's not the greatest source only because it's intermittent and you can't really afford that for your oxygen a lot of the time. But if you happen to have this and if you're really desperate for it, then yeah, this is definitely another solution. Which, again, you're going to need to spend sand on. But if you can automate it like I've done here, then yeah, it's okay, I guess. But, uh, like I said, anything that's in here is in this miscellaneous section for a reason. And that's because it's not going to be your first thing you're going to look towards when you want to produce oxygen. The last thing I'm going to talk about is a hot polluted oxygen vent. These things come out, or rather the polluted oxygen comes out at 932 Fahrenheit. Um, that will give you a big burn if you happen to mess around with that, things at that temperature. So that's very high. You can see it, uh, it's about to erupt with more hot oxygen. The setup I have here looks very similar to my hydrogen power setups that I've shown in the past. Basically, you're just going to use some steam and a steam turbine to absorb some of the initial heat. Once it gets cooled down to the point that it's safe for these gas pumps to interact with it, we're going to pump it out into something like this. And our, uh, our deodorizers are doing a bad job of handling this, but I'm going to pump it out into something like this where it gets cooled down to a reasonable temperature because even when it comes through these doors, it's going to still be at about 240 degrees. So once we pump it into here, we're going to be expecting... Oh, this is why. I made a mistake. Uh, we're going to be expecting it to flow upward and eventually through these deodorizers and down into the area that would sort of resemble your base. So... This is another way to do it. Um, this is a very complicated setup for ultimately not that much polluted oxygen. Even when it's emitting, which is very occasional, it's gonna be supporting like three dupes at max for like a short period of time. So these are not that great. You're gonna produce just a tiny bit of electricity on it, but the amount of electricity you'd probably spend to uh, cool your water back down is probably gonna make it not worth it automatically. So yeah, setup like that, uh, it's, it's there. I mean, it's not the greatest thing, but that's why we have all these miscellaneous setups here that are not going to be super common. So that's it for the basically the sterile like build section of the video. And this one's going to be shorter than normal ones because oxygen is pretty straightforward for the most part. Let's just check out uh, some of the setups that I have in one of my uh, saves from one of my prior runs. If you happen to watch one of those videos, you can see these solutions actually in action. So let's jump over there now. All right, let's take a look at some real examples from an actual run. Uh, this was from my walkthrough crew uh, videos. This was basically walking new players through an entire run. Um, and this was at cycle 149, and we had 11 dupes by now. Uh, so reasonable amount for that, st that stage of the game. Maybe a little faster than you might be comfortable with, but this just illustrates that you can use very like basic uh, oxygen solutions for quite a while. And for a pretty decently sized population. Uh, note that I don't have any electrolyzers set up here, and I'm not actually going to show those in a real game because th if they function in one way, then they function normally. And like I said, I, I'm not super proud of showing the inefficient ones in my walkthrough videos. Um, the really efficient electrolyzer setups that I showed earlier are definitely going to be the ones that you want to use. And you'll probably want to use them around the time when you start running out of, uh, out of algae. So keep an eye on your algae, and once you start running low, you might want to think about producing water or producing oxygen from water, therefore using the electrolyzers. But the solutions I have right now, uh, by the way, just to prove out that everything is good, this is my breathability setup here, so it looks very good throughout my base. My dupes can go anywhere. I do have the uh, ventilation system set up here, so this is venting uh, gases that are not oxygen out of my base, and it is going into space like we talked about. So can see it eventually exiting up here. It's not running right now because we don't need to pump anything out right now, so hence the automation. But the actual oxygen sources are one, this algae terrarium, which again, I kind of wish I didn't put in here. I wish I would have done the easier solution of producing this polluted water. But the whole point of this is that if you have one of these, they're consistently being used and they're consistently being emptied. They're gonna create polluted water. And I have a huge uh, like block of polluted water here that's producing a lot of uh, of polluted oxygen and this just continues to grow over the run to the point that I have a huge block of polluted uh, water sitting here and it produces a lot of polluted oxygen throughout the game. It's very cheap using very little algae using very little water. Uh, pretty good trade-off and like I said this can be used this way but I would prefer just to do it the other way that I showed which is just pumping polluted water out of here into one of these uh, tanks that looks like this and then just deleting the tank to get the same effect. And finally, uh, we can see that I am localizing all my slime and all my polluted dirt to a certain spot of the map. 
Um, I just have dupes running in here as soon as I mine it out. So if I were to go somewhere and mine out more slime, which maybe we could do on purpose here. If there's some actually accessible and nearby. So if I were to mine some of this out, uh, we would have a dupe come over here, mine it out. I'll prioritize it pretty high. As soon as this slime gets mined out, somebody should just come pick it up because those chests are requesting at a pretty high priority. So a couple blocks will get out here and there. Somebody should be by here in just a second. There we go. Somebody just grabbed it. They're going to run over to these boxes and drop it off. So that's kind of what I do about managing all the slime from those areas. There may be a little bits of polluted oxygen around here, but you can barely even notice considering how fast they usually pick it up. Or you can also just build them uh, on location. So if you know you're going to mine out a bunch of slime at once, you can just drop a deodorizer like this. And you can just uh, have it set up so that as soon as you mine it out, we're catching all of the polluted oxygen before it gets back into our base. So yeah, there's a couple of different ways you can handle that. But those are pretty much all the ways that I'm producing oxygen in this run up until I get my electrolyzers, which is not until maybe cycle 250 or so. Um, so yeah. That's what a real run looks like. That's what real oxygen looks like. So again, and like usual, if you guys have any questions about anything that is shown in these videos or any comments or suggestions or whatever, please leave them down below. I will more than happily answer them. Um, as far as other videos you might be interested in, I do have other tutorials and stuff like that that you can check out. I'm also playing through right now as this video is being recorded in a run that we, we challenge ourselves to do really silly stuff. So check those out if you're interested. Uh, I will respond to any comments you guys leave, so go ahead and drop them down there. And until the next video, I'll see you guys soon.